Hello and uh, welcome to Learn and the podcast series that we are making together with Enkoi School. Uh, this is a, a series of four conversations that are meant to inspire and educate related to uh, the styling of our homes and our offices and interior design for the future. My guests are Sylvie Maria Fielsta from Enkoi and Anja Bisgold from Spot Trends. Welcome. Thank you. Ladies, this is our fourth and final conversation, and it's really a sort of a wrap up um, of uh, what we talked about. We talked a lot about some trends already, uh, driven especially by technology, sustainability, and big changes in demographics. We live longer. Uh, we um, yeah, we have lots of new needs that we didn't have perhaps uh, some years ago. Um, we also talked about uh, how to think about humans as the central part of interior design uh, and society, and then how to how to think about materials, purchasing process, value chains, and ecosystems as we build. And uh, now, in this final one, I would like to ask Anya first to help us understand how to how to follow trends. What are the trend tools and and perhaps, you know, if you have, there's a jungle in trends as well. So how to prioritize and apply? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think also to wrap a lot of these things up that we've, we've t talked about um, in turning trends into business, there is a lot of focus on, you know, understanding who are you actually making trends for? Who is the end consumer? Who is the end client for an interior designer, for example? And how do we then understand the trend and who will actually purchase those trends and who are the, those trends right for? And those different, there are different tools and different um, aspects to that. Um, and there's also different approaches. Um, in the start of me becoming a, a trend researcher, that's like 15 years ago, it was very much a lot about, you know, just gathering um, a lot of information. It was actually very exotic to be an interior or a trend researcher at that point because it was a little bit special. But with digitalization, with social media came out, you know, we kind of released all visual images there is so you can just sit down now and and be your own trend researcher and and look into different things and find trends um, you know trends is is something that happens and changes a way of the normality or the societal norm right now and it changes into into something else so you need to find different perspectives of where this trend is all of a sudden coming in and where it comes and you need a lot of those different points and put them kind of down into a funnel and then at the end you kind of materialize a, a trend that goes into for example both interiors and and um of fashion. Um, so, of course, you still need to do a lot of ground research. You need to follow a lot of boring things, actually, as well as creative things. But you need to follow societal moves. You need to follow economics. Um, you need to follow politics in terms of understanding where are the societal turns going on, as well as, as the creative turns. But that's, to me, not, not enough anymore. And that's what laid also the foundation for, for my line of work is that it's not just enough to say, hey, I found a trend. Look at all the materials and look at the fine mood boards that I can make. Um, you need to understand who will actually purchase this trend. And I think this comes really good in hand with also being a good interior designer. Um, because um, if an interior designer really can understand its client and really understand what kind of taste and what kind of setting and what kind of surroundings they would really like, um, then they are becoming um, exceptionally good. And that has to do with what different kind of emotional preference that we have for purchasing things. And those are actually kind of fine-tuned and lined up within our identity and within our personality. So I use a lot of um, theory from psychology, from neurophysiology in understanding emotional preferences in buying behavior from consumers. So it's actually a very much of a brain perspective that I also apply into economics and, and uh, creatives and stuff like that in understanding what actually goes on in our brain when we purchase things. 
Um, and we purchase things that we like. It sounds so simple, but we like different things. And to me, of course, I would also have to work with clients of whose products that I don't like personally. And resembles to that to an interior designer, you would also have clients that you don't like their personal taste, but you have to make something fabulous for them. So it's really about understanding both your own emotional preferences and understand um, uh, a different the different kind of segments that goes into um, different trends and into different consumers and really understand their perspectives. And it can also seem simple that it's just different tastes, but it is more than that. It's really how you can then say, okay, this new trend, I'm spotting something here that has a resemblance of some kind of aesthetic, some kind of uh, characteristic, and this will be relevant for these people with these kinds of emotional segments. And that is how I navigate these new trends into saying, oh, these are the kind of consumers who would like this coming trend, and these are the consumers that would like this other coming trends. And I've developed a, a model that goes into emotional segmentation and lifestyle concepts where you can look into then what is characterizing the persona, what is characterizing the emotional segments, and what is then characterizing that lifestyle concept uh, of what it is that they would have a preferability of liking. And then you add the new layers. And that is different. And when you started up, uh, Sylvia, saying that sometimes interior design goes very slow in development, and that's absolutely true because some consumers don't change that much. They only like small, tiny bits of changes. I usually compare it to fashion, where it's the suit people that they only want a little bit of a change on the color. Either it's this narrow or more wider, or it's double-breasted or single-breasted. It's really a small change. But we have other consumers who really love everything to be completely opposite of what they've just had before. They would be the ones going from minimalism to maximalism, for example. And then you have other consumers that just want to update their style. You know, they just want a new pillow. They just want a new color, but they contain, stay within a certain style concept because that's theirs and that's what they love and that's what they will purchase things into. And then there are those with uh, who are just really looking into comfort and stability and loyalty who doesn't change that much. And it maybe takes them 10 years or a whole life to, to never even change. And there's also products for them if you just understand making what it is that they love. So I really use this emotional segmentation and lifestyle concept in terms of turning trends into business and understand what kind of consumer would buy what? And I think that's also very relevant for an, an interior designer. Thank you. Um, I, I, uh, I'm just thinking that, you know, no matter how uh, stability loving you are, sometimes life changes uh, both unexpectedly and sometimes expectedly. So I have a house with the four children, uh, teenagers all of them uh, now and uh, you know i had to i had to build a space that works for us as a family now but that is going to change in 10 years quite dramatically and uh, you know not doing any changes or updates uh, would probably be very counterproductive so sometimes people also need some help to understand what what you know how they their changes have um, or how their needs have changed of course um, I, life stages so in those changes in life stages your need within your house and interior is also need that's why we had to renovate our house i have two teenage sons in a minute and i definitely want to be in the other part of the house than, than they are so that they can you know be noisy and have their friends over and do everything they want to do and i can just relax on the couch still so when you go into different life stages of course things uh things change but you do it, the whole theory of behind this is that you through your life you have a core kind of direction of where your emotional preferences are in relation to aesthetics to things to products that goes into lifestyle so whether it's a couch or a jacket or something in the kitchen then you have a, a certain um, area that you work within a certain line of characteristics that you prefer and like so maybe if you are changing you would love to have your really durable um, um, classic Danish design chair with you because it really has a lot of meaning and it is something that you really appreciate. Or other consumers would prefer to just, oh, have that new thing or build that upcycled chair because that's what they uh, they prefer. 
And, and, and this direction is also why we don't have enough people with um, the emotional preferences for sustainability. That's also one of the reasons why we don't have that big enough push from the consumer side, because it's not enough consumers who have it top of mind. It's other um, aesthetics and other emotional preferences that are more important um, to the majority. <clears throat> Thank you, Anya. Uh, Selvi, I would like to ask you for the final five minutes of this mini course in part in four parts uh, to say um, if you are to choose a few points that you would want to make sure that your students remember, what would it be? Well, um, there there's a lot because we've been touching into a lot of different things, but um, definitely that they should um, ask questions, uh, raise their awareness. Uh, around the products that they uh, want to uh, apply into their design projects uh, and do research. And we've talked about, you know, uh, bringing nature in and and some of our students are living uh, in the outskirts and some are living in the city. What does that to people? Are you designing for the same kind of people? Know your um, uh, demographics and know your uh, target group. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, um, also we haven't touched much into, into it, but digitalization, um, the digital world, uh, combining it, you know, uh, that I think research asking questions is, is be curious, you know, and, and, uh, try to learn as much as you can because the, um, um, the world is small and the digital world is big and everyone can get information if they want to and even your clients. So you need to be ahead and you also need to f find the tools that Anya is talking about if, uh, as far as getting, um, listen to the experts and, uh, and uh, educate yourself on how to look at trends and why you should do it. And then you can be in force of influence to your clients and make the world better, <laughs> not just beautiful. Make the world better, not just more beautiful. I love that. Uh, Anya, you talked a lot about trends. You helped us understand how you research them and gave us some tools for um, our students as well. But um, uh, there also there are some specific trends, maybe given that we are based in Scandinavia. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a certain set of historical and cultural preferences to the way we live, but also the materials we use, etc. Um, how do you, what do you think students should do for them to become, you already talked about trend spotting, but uh, to make their coherent story based on all of these trends that they understand, you know, how do they build their own set of principles for good interior design? Wow! Yeah, that was a, that was a big one at the end here. Um, mm, I but guess I guess you know you hear you see hundreds of trends and you read lots of channels and uh, you know uh, from from everything from design to the Economist, etc. And and mm. you still have a coherent story in your head. You know where you be believe this is going. So mm -hmm. how can the students start weaving their own thing? Well, well, for certain, they also, you know, have to be in line of what kind of concept or what kind of profile they would want to have as an interior designer. Like what is their UPS? That's what you have to do all the time uh, as running your own company. What is your unique selling point and try to find that within interiors? What is what do you want to, how do you want your existence to matter um, in, in the world? Whether it being that you push for sustainability or you're really strong on color or something like that, I would, I would advise them to do that. Um, but what I also thought about was in line with what um, Sylvie said, and I think looking at all the trends and the 20 years I've been working with this and, and, and with what stands uh, as a big thing, um, 
going through Corona and, and all of the places that we are right now, home matters extremely a lot. And I think really well-being in terms of what we also talked about, I think it was in two or three, um, in terms of how can we increase well-being. And well-being as an interior designer is like the key point for me looking into the coming years. Um, well-being from many different perspectives, uh, how can well-being be at the forefront of the spaces that they create? Because we need that. I mean, mental health is on the rise, um, you know, and, and with anxiety comes that digitalization has a darker side on that. So I really think that uh, that human well-being is extremely important in the spaces that we surround ourselves with. Very I also, yeah. yeah, I also think that uh, a tip to the students is, uh, you know, if you do not if you, like Anya said, try to choose um, your direction as an interior designer or stylist, but if you do not know your direction and you're kind of an all-rounder, then you can ask questions to your, it's all communication, you know. You communicate your designs out to your clients. You can ask your clients, what was the best that I did for you? And then maybe that can be an analysis later mm -hmm. so they can figure out okay i'm really strong at this so your ups mm -hmm. can kind of come along after working a little while but the center point of both of what you say is uh, you have to eventually realize who you are and be true to that and this is going to be an expression of uh, uh in many ways of your strong points and your uh driving forces as well at and least the direction. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you both so very much for a really uh, interesting set of conversations about the future of interior design, styling of our homes and our offices and sustainability. Thank you. Thank you.